We love you. Know in your heart that you are loved. We bless you. And you are a blessing to this world. We appreciate you. You are an individualized expression of God. We behold the Christ as you. The kingdom of heaven is all around you and within you. We, we look, look forward, forward to, to the, the time when, when we will be together, together again. again. Good morning. Here we are. Reverend Pat wishing you a welcoming good morning and knowing that um, you are here and we are ready for you. So as we open up our hearts and our minds, let us open up to the music that we have by our beloved Dina and she will welcome us in. Welcome indeed. Let me get these a little closer there. That's as good as it's going to... No, it's not as good as it's going to get. It can get a little better. Hang on. I was doing sound check before this with our musical guest today, which is Julie Thompson. So I didn't have a chance to fine tune this before I came on. All right, there we go. Okay, house built on love. Come, let us gather together. This is a place of love. We come together. This is a house built on love. Come, let us gather in peace. This is a sacred space. We join our hearts here in one loving family. This is a house built on love. We come together. This is a house built on love. Good morning again. Oh my goodness, look at all that are here with us this morning. Elizabeth and Dawn and Michelle and Randy, Christine, Jack, Elizabeth, Kate. Paula, we are so grateful for each and every one of you. And if you are with us today for the very first time, we would love for you to put your name in the chat box and let us know where you're from. And so now I'm going to invite us into prayer as we begin our time together. And as Dina said, we have a special guest musician, our own Julie Thompson is here with us this morning. So let us take a moment and come into a space of prayer, opening up our hearts and our minds, giving thanks that we get to walk this earth today, knowing that the Spirit of the Lord goes before us. And everything that we do today is spirit-guided and spirit-led. 
And as we open up our hearts and let the love that we are pour out, let it go to where it is being called. There are so many places on our planet right now where love is needed. And knowing that we are the love in this world. And that love goes above all of the other things that are happening. All of the things that we might call as, as awful or bad or whatever. Love goes beyond that and calls us up into that love. For we know that love is the healing bomb. And so as we continue with our service this morning, just let that love that you are continue to pour out. You don't even have to direct it. Spirit knows exactly where it's needed. And so we just give thanks. We give thanks for this opportunity that we have today to be love in the world. And for that and so much more, we say thank you, God. And so it is, and we let it be. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome again. I'm so glad that you're here with us. Oh, I'm seeing other people on here as well. Doug, hi. From Franklin, Wisconsin, musical accompanist for Julie Thompson. Oh, we're so happy to have you with us this morning, Doug. And we got Kathy from North Carolina with us this morning. Bill Taylor, our beloved Bill. So many of you here. Please also share and like our uh, Facebook page because it's another way for people to know that we're here. I also want to say that our prayer partner this morning who is holding the service in prayer is Barbara Kowalska. And we're very happy that she is here with us this morning. And so now I'm going to invite us into our um, saying our invocation. I'm going to bring Dina back on. Uh, and let us together, and that's perfect, Dina. Oops, it was perfect, great right? where you have it. Awesome, awesome. So say this with me our, for our invocation. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. One presence, one power operating in our life. And that presence is with us always. And our vision statement is centered in divine love. We celebrate a spiritually transformed world. And I have to tell you, I believe that we are in the midst of this spiritual transformation. You know, um, the chaos has to happen before we come into true community, true union. So I just know that whatever is going on is bringing us to that spiritually transformed world. And our mission statement is, Unity Center for Spiritual Growth reaches in to reach out through education, service, and creation of community. As everything we do here, we begin with prayer. And then we take the guidance and we apply it where it is needed. And we have core values that we live by. And those core values are we are loving. We are accepting. We are authentic. We are transformative. We are soul centric. We are compassionate and we are welcoming. And when we are practicing these core values, we are contributing to that spiritually transformed world. We are being the love in action. And so use these, know that they are here for your use. And so, as we said, we have our guest musician with us this morning and let us bring her on at this moment. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Reverend Pat and all my Unity family. Um, I miss you all so much <laughs> from this August. I'm normally there and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't travel. Well, you can see if you're looking at the chat line, you can see lots and lots of people that you know are here with you this morning. Hi, everybody. And we are so happy that you're with us today, Julie. We know that if you could, you'd be here. 
And so this is this is second best. That's right. I'm really glad we have this option. And uh, I'm I'm I have to admit I'm nervous. <laughs> Don't I'm be nervous. nervous, honey. You know, uh, technology. We're all aware of how the technology works and how it sometimes doesn't work. And so we know that in our practice prior to there was a little bit of a delay in in you, but your music was beautiful. So. We just know that that's happening and, and we go with that. You know, we kind of roll with the with the times. So I'm going to uh, turn it all over to you and let us hear your beautiful voice this morning. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate what you said at the beginning of the service. There's so many people that need prayer. And um, if we think of it with hope and not despair. Here's a song by a friend of mine. Sometimes it seems like the world has gone crazy But keep your heart true When those around you have all lost their way You can find your way through Hold on to hope Hold on to hope if you can't change the world, then don't let it change you. And hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. When hatred and anger are swirling around you, don't let them take you. When crazy people are all you can see, close your eyes and be free. Hold on to hope, hold on to hope, you can survive if you keep hope alive, so hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. When you're in pain and the world seems insane, there's no one that you can turn to. You'll be okay, yes, you'll find a way. You can find strength in all your sight. You do hold on to hope, hold on to hope. If you can't change the world, then don't let it change you. And hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. Hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. One more time with me. Hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. Thank you. And boy, what an appropriate song for where we are right now. Thank you for that. And I just want to mention too, um, Julie, as you well know, is in Wisconsin. And so we send some of that love that we are to Wisconsin because I know that there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of unrest going on right in Wisconsin. So we hold you and, and your, your state in our hearts and in our love. So thank you. Thank you. And you know, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know, that I talk every Sunday about our five basic principles. And I talk about these five basic principles because they are so needed right now. We need to stay in, a, in the consciousness of these five principles because it's very easy with what's going on in our world to uh, get into the throes of the, the despair. And so hope is absolutely the word that we want to hold on to, but also practicing these five basic principles. And so the first one is that God is good and everywhere present. God is good and everywhere present. There is no place that you are on this planet that God is not. And the second one is, is that the spirit of God lives within each person. Therefore, all people are inherently good. I know that's hard to think about when we're seeing some of the stuff that's happening, but know at the core of their being, every, every single human being on this planet is a child of God. 
and everyone is inherently good. Whatever is showing up in them is not the truth of who they are. And so again, we must remember that. We must shower them with love. The third one is that we create our life experience through our way of thinking. Our thoughts are creative. This is hallmark to unity. Our thoughts are creative. So as we are thinking these thoughts, that is what is showing up in our world. I hear something out my window. I'm going to shut my window. Hold on. All right. I don't know why people want to do things on Sunday morning when I'm trying to have fresh air come in. But whatever. The fourth one is that there is power in affirmative prayer, which we believe increases our connection to God. Through prayer and meditation, we are always connecting in with spirit. And when we connect in with spirit, then we remember that everybody is inherently good. We remember that our thoughts are creative and we watch what we're thinking. And then the fifth one, is putting it into action. Knowledge of these spiritual principles is not enough. We must live them. We must live them. So I invite you this week to make sure that you have your spiritual tool bag with you at all times and that you pull out whatever principle is needed in that moment. And so let us move on to the daily word. And I am really happy to have with us our daily word reader this morning. And that is Carol Holt. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Pat. I am so happy to see you this morning from Ocean Park down in Old Orchard. Very, very happy that you're with us this morning and that you'll be sharing the daily word with us. I want to say something about Carol before we... Uh, have her read the daily word. Um, Carol came to us a few years ago as her partner was um, Bill French. And many of us know Bill French from years and years of his service to unity. And uh, Bill made his transition um, a while ago and Carol has stayed with us and we are so grateful. She is so um, there you know, on Friday evening, she's with us when we do our Friday evening meal down at Unity. She comes with even her own tray table. She is so cute. She sits there with her tray table and her napkin and she's ready to go. And every time that we have a live um, event going on, we can always count on Carol being there. So it is a joy, Carol, this morning to have you share the daily word with us. So I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. The, the daily word Sunday, August 30th is light. The light of God surrounds me. When darkness casts shadows in my life or in the life of someone I care about, I call upon the divine light that lives within me and expresses as me. Just as the light of the sun illuminates the sky, the light of God illuminates my mind, brightens my soul, and warms my heart. Even during life's darkest moments, the light of God is always shining within me, just as it shines in all people. Basking in this light, I find the strength and power to lift myself up. Through acts of service and loving kindness, I can be the light that helps guide others through any darkness they may be facing. Every smile, kind word, thoughtful deed, or offer of help has the potential to brighten someone's day. And from Psalm 112, verse 4, they rise in the darkness as light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. And the word for today is light. Thank you, Carol. That was beautiful. And for those of you uh, who are seeing the paintings behind her, I believe those are done by you. Am I correct, Carol? It's a photograph. It's a photograph. Beautiful. Thank but you. I, I took the photograph. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks a lot. And now we're going to bring back um, Julie Thompson. Here I am. Hello, yes. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Julie, I'm turning it over to you, girl. All right. So 
Julian of Norwich is the theme. And I found this song on the web and talked to the writer, Reverend Meg Barnhouse. It goes like this. Kind of a conversation. Julian, you are holy. You are holding my hand. And Julian, you are holy. You are holding my hand. She said, all will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. I said, Julian, do you not know, do you not know about sorrow? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about pain? Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about hunger, Julian? Do you not know? Do you not know about shame? She said, all oh, will be well. All oh, will be well. All oh, manner of things will be well. I said, Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about loneliness and Julian? Do you not know, do you not know about disease? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about cruelty? Julian, do you not know, it brought me to my knees. She said, all oh, will be well, all oh, will be well. All manner of things will be well. She said, no one does not know, does not know about loneliness. She said, no one does not know, does not know about disease. No one does not know, does not know about cruelty. I know too much. It brought me to my knees. When I heard all will be well, all will be well. All manner of things will be well. She said, all will be well. All will be well. All manner of things will be well. All manner of things will be well. Oh, oh, Julie, that was so beautiful. And it certainly sets up the talk that I'm about to, to give. I thank you so much, my dear. You're um, welcome. Are, the, are the lyrics um, available online? Um, you know, I think it's going to be in the chat box, the whole lyrics. I skipped a little bit because it's really long. Okay. But um, yeah, and also, yes, they are online. And this woman... Meg Barnhouse is a reverend at a Unitarian church. And when you told me the theme, I researched and I found this song and then I con connected with her. So she has it for sale on Amazon and okay. other things too. And it's she does a beautiful job and the instrumentation is great. So I, I found it very meditative. Wonderful. And oh if, my, if my friend Doug was here, who's listening yeah. and watching, then he'd be adding to the sound in the back, <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next time. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. So as you well know, um, this is the theme for today, uh, Julian of Norwich. I'm going to start with a quote from Matthew Fox. He says, a time of pandemic is a time for bringing back feminine energies. No theologian in the West has more thoroughly developed the rich theme of the motherhood of God than has Julian of Norwich. Just as God is truly father, she writes, so also is God truly our mother. I love that. Um, and I uh, say I love that because um, Friday night, I mentioned that being down for the for the meal uh, on Friday night that Don, uh, that D so um, graciously prepares for us. We were talking about the need for feminine energy in government right now. Um, so it, it, it's fitting for what we're talking about here this morning. 
and the conversations that we have on Friday night are just priceless. So I invite you to come and join in on that. So last Sunday, I shared with you about Hildegard of Bingen. And so today I'm bringing you Julian of Norwich, who is another mystic from the Middle Ages. She was born in 1342 and died in 1416. And both of these women had mystical experiences that have influenced the generations. So I want to share a little bit of the history of the time of Julian so you better understand her profound message and especially the words that Julie just sang. In the 1300s, England was a horrible place to be. Population was about 5 million at the time and the average lifespan span of an individual was 35 and this was only recorded by those who were of the royal families. The regular folks did not get their um, lifespans uh, recorded. By 1400 the population dropped to 2 million and the lifespan dropped to 17 years old. Now why was that? And you may wonder it begins with what scientists believe is the result of a volcanic eruption in New Zealand in 1315, which began a climate crisis. So right back in the 1300s, they were dealing with climate crisis just as we are today. So you can see why it's so relevant to talk about Julian. So during this volcanic eruption, it changed the amount of sunlight hitting the earth and what that meant was that for two growing seasons, the um, climate was too cold and rainy for crops to grow. So that created a famine. And that famine would go on through 1369, where many people died. And as though that wasn't enough to deal with, in 1348, Black Death Plague swept through Europe. Half of Europe died in 1348. The plague appeared two more times during that century. So now they've got a climate crisis, they've got a plague. And then also going on was the Hundred Years' War, battles between the, England and, between the English and French lasting from 1337 until well into the 1400s. So can you see here that we may be seeing how history repeats itself? More than a hundred years of exhausting, decimating war, 3.5 million soldiers and civilians died. Catholicism was the only acceptable religion at that time. And the priests were preaching sin, sin, and more sin. And what that translated to, that God was angry at you. So you can see how with all the things that were going on, that was a natural thought process. That if everything was from God, then God was angry. And Christ was the one who had suffered to make you grateful enough to live a pure life. So if you weren't pure, say that you were poaching animals because your family was starving, you were sinning. So good luck in hell. This is an example of how the church controlled. This was a very good example how how the church controlled with the um, teaching of sin. And if you if you stayed pure, if you adhered to their rules, then you were good. But if not, you were going to go to hell in a handbasket. So now let's bring Julian onto the scene because this was the world that Julian was born into. She was sick. She was six when de Black Death first ravaged England. And in all of the writings about Julian, we never do know what her real name is. And we also don't know 
what her first 30 years of life was. She could have been married and had children and witnessed their deaths. She could have been like Hildegard and in a convent at a very early age. So we don't know. But all we can be sure of is that this woman, like all English citizens at the time, suffered grief and loss. And we know that at the age of 30, she became so ill that a priest administered last rites to her. And as the priest held the crucifix over her, she opened her eyes and looked on the cross and fell into visions. And I want to share with you from the book, The Showings of Julian of Norwich, translated by Maribai Starr. I want to read what Maribai says. How could her death, her own death be anything but a welcome reprieve from a life of such tragedy? She also asked for it. When Julian was young, she confesses in the throes of spiritual idealism, she prayed for three graces. One, to bear witness to the passion of Christ. Two, to endure an illness serious enough to carry her to the brink of death but not beyond, and three, to experience the triple wound of contrition, compassion, and longing for God. Her prayer was answered. She became so ill that the priest was called to administer last rites. She had a vision of Jesus dying on the cross before her eyes, his copiously flowing blood enough to have splashed up the walls of her room and the teachings that Christ gave to her filled her heart with humility, empathy for all suffering beings and a burning yearning for union with God, which she refers to as wanting. So right there, we see that what she had prayed for and asked for as a young child she or a young person she received. So what happened after she received these 16 visions that she called showings of divine love? After recovering from her illness, she became an anchoress at the church of St. Julian in Norwich, English, England. And that's where the name Julian comes from. It's from the church that she was connected to. And so what is an anchoress? An anchoress was essentially a female hermit. But instead of fleeing into the desert and, and living in a cave, she attached herself like an anchor to a church. An anchoress cell often had two or maybe three small rooms. Generally, each was only three paces long and three paces wide. Can you imagine that? The cell had a small window into the sanctuary of the church so that she could view the mass and receive communion. There was also a window to the outside of the cell where people could come to speak with her, requesting prayers and advice. She was likely to have an attendant to bring food and supplies. Oftentimes, the women of the, of the uh, area would bring her gifts, would bring her food. These were the people that she gave counsel to. What was completely lacking in an anchor's cell was a door through which anyone could enter or the anchoress could leave. So she was walled in, essentially walled in to this little three room, three spaces, three paces forward, three paces backwards. That was her life for 20 years. It is thought that she lived that long, even though the plague returned again and again, because her isolation protected her from the deadly disease. Does this sound familiar? Is this what this physical... Um, distancing is for us right now because she wasn't out in amongst the people she was spared 
In her writing, she described herself as unleaded or illiterate at the time of her visions. But she clearly did learn to read and write in life. So once she entered her anchorage and was sealed inside, her life was given over completely to prayer and contemplation. So we're going to look at her showings that resulted in her writings. And again, I'm going to quote from Mirabai Starr. She writes, The medieval English anchoress Julian of Norwich bequeathed us a radically optimistic theology. And you can hear that in that song that Julie sang. She had no problem admitting that human beings have a tendency to go astray. We rupture relationships, dishonor the divine, make unfortunate choices, and try to hide our faults. And yet, Julian insists, all will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things shall be well. I want you to take that in. All will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things shall be well. This assertion is meant to penetrate the fog of our despair and wake us up. How appropriate is it for now? That fog that she's talking about is that COVID fog that we're all experiencing. Julian repeats her declaration three times, most emphatically the third. All will be well and all will be well and all manner of things shall be well. She does not ask us to relegate everything that unfolds to the will of God, calling it perfect against all evidence to the contrary. She, sw she squarely faces the inevitability that we will miss the mark, what Julian calls sin and what unity calls missing the mark and that there is wickedness in this world. I've told you many times over that in this world there is suffering and there are and there is wickedness and we're seeing it playing out in our world. So even so, she is convinced that the nature of the divine is loving kindness and she wants us to absorb into this into every fiber of our being. And this is unity through and through. God is good and everywhere present. In her mystical masterwork, The Showings, Julian shares that she used to obsess about sin. She couldn't figure out why God, who is all powerful, wouldn't have eliminated our negative proclivities when he made the world. And I think that Hildegard said something very similar to this. If he had left, left sin out of creation, it seemed to me all would be well. But what God the mother showed Julian in a near-death vision during her 13th revelation was that all shall be well anyway, not in spite of our transgressions, but because of them. Julian unpacks this for us in chapter 27 of her book, The 13th Revelation. In doing so, she dispenses with the whole concept of sin and replaces it with love. Do you see why we're so drawn to Julian? I believe that sin has no substance, Julian writes, not a particle of being. While sin itself has no existential value, it has impact. It causes pain. It is a pain that has substance. But mercy is swiftly forthcoming. It is immediately available, inexorable. It is frankly rude of us to doubt that all will be well. When he said these gentle words, Julian writes, speaking of God the mother, he showed me that he does not have one iota of blame for me or for any other person. 
So wouldn't it be unkind of me to blame God for my transgressions since he does not blame me? The merciful nature of God renders the whole blame game obsolete. In fact, it is when we stumble that the divine looks most tenderly upon us. Our vulnerability is beautiful to God the mother. And that is the end of the quote from Meribai. So what Julian is saying here is that God does not hold any condemnation towards us. God does not see us as anything but lovable. And so when we say, I can't forgive myself, we are saying that I'm more powerful than God. Because if God doesn't hold me accountable, it doesn't hold anything unforgiving towards me, how can I? Think about that, my friends. Author and Episcopal priest Mary Earle says, one of Julian's most radical insights, with which I fully concur, is that there can be no wrath in God. There can be no wrath in God. God is pure love. Earl goes on to say, Julian's radical insistence that we know there is no anger in God directs us all to look at ways in which we project our own bitterness, anger, and vengeance upon God. I'm going to read that again because that's important. Julian's radical insistence that we know there is no anger in God directs us to look at ways in which we project our own bitterness, anger, and vengeance upon God. In a resolutely maternal way, she encourages us to grow up, to cast aside our immature and punitive images of God, and to be honest with ourselves about our own actions that have their roots in spiritual blindness. She encourages us to grow up, to cast aside our immature and punitive images of God, and to be honest with ourselves about our own actions that have their roots in spiritual blindness. When we can define God, then we are making God too small. And that's what she's saying here. Julian tells us again and again in a variety of ways that God is our friend, our mother, and our father, as close to us as the clothing we wear, nearer than our hands and feet. And Earl goes on to say, she employs homely imagery and language, the vocabulary of domesticity to tell us her experience. At the same time, she demonstrates a degree of sophisticated theological language. Julian is firm and steady on these points. God is one. Everything is in God. God is in everything. God transcends and encloses all that is made. And then Earl adds one more point. She said, the only point I would add to that list from my own study of Julian is that she really believes that God is love. That God is love. And when we know that God is one, when we say every week there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our life, God the good omnipotent. Julian contemplated love, joy, and compassion. She didn't see suffering as punishment, but a means of being drawn into spirituality and love. Isn't that what we're finding during this COVID situation? That many of us are going deeper into our own spiritual journey? 
Julian experiences a quiet life in a tiny home at the beck and call of hurting people who would stop at her window to talk. She wrote that this is our calling. It is God's will that we be occupied in knowing and loving until the time comes that we shall be fulfilled in heaven. Loving and knowing, loving and learning. That is her faith statement and can be yours and mine as well. Loving and knowing, loving and learning. Here are a few quotes from Maribai. I mean, from, um, Julian, as the body is clothed in cloth and the muscles in the skin and the bones in the muscles and the heart in the chest, so are we, body and soul, clothed and enclosed in the goodness of God. How beautiful is that? And then she says, God is the true father and mother of nature and all natures that are made to flow out of God to work the divine will shall be restored and brought again into God. God is the true father and mother of nature and all natures that are made to flow out of God to work the divine will sh shall be be restored and brought again into God. And we see that. We see that cycle of nature. And then this one. I saw that our God was never wrathful, nor ever shall be. God's lucidity and unity will never allow this. God is the goodness that cannot be wrathful. Our soul is one to God, unchangeable goodness. And therefore, between God and our soul, there is neither wrath nor forgiveness because there is no between. And so as you think about Julian this week, I hope you take time to maybe do a little bit more of your own research on her. But sit with these words and let them wash over you. And I will be putting them in heart thought this week, especially the one that I just read. And you can use it as a means of doing your meditation. And now let us prepare for meditation. quiet in prayer, I open my heart, I open my heart. When I'm quiet in prayer, I open my heart, hallelujah. Quiet in prayer, I see only love, see only love. When I'm quiet in prayer, I see only love. Hallelujah. And again, I'm reading out of Maribai Stas book, um, The Showings of Julian of Norwich. And let this be our, our lead into meditation. So I invite you to get comfortable. Maybe take a few deep breaths to just allow yourself to settle in. And you may already be settled in. Isn't it wonderful to be able to be in your special chair? listening to the service.
watching the service. So this is, it is I. And let these words just flow over you. After this, our beloved revealed himself to me in a much more glorified form than I had ever seen. He showed me that our soul will never find rest until it comes into him and understands that he is the fullness of all joy. He is simple and gracious, the source of true life and unending bliss. Our beloved Jesus often said to me, it is I. It is I. It is I who am most exalted. It is I whom you love. It is I who delights you. It is I whom you serve. I am the one you long for. I am the one you desire. I am the object of your intention. I am all. It is I whom Holy Church preaches and teaches you about. It is I who has showed myself to you here. I cannot say what these words mean or comprehend it myself. It is up to each of you with the grace of God to interpret them as God intended with love. And so it is. Amen.
So Julie has a third song. So we're going to switch over to Julie to do the offering song. I'm teary <laughs> just being with you, Dina, and everybody else. I was singing with you and harmonizing, and I'm a little emotional right now. <laughs> so I hope that you will sing at home and, and uh, dance around on this song. Uh, I'm doing a Pete Seeger song, and you can sing along even though the words won't be up. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. And Pete Seeger is one of my musical heroes. And now Julian of Norwich. Wow, Reverend Pat, that was amazing. Um, thank you for starting our education on her. This is my percussion background. So pull your drums out. I'm going to sing the melody of the chorus two different ways. And you can choose one. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Well, may the skiers turn, the swimmers churn, the lovers burn. Peace may the generals learn when I'm far away. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Sweet, may the fiddle sound, the banjo play at the old hotel town. Dancers swing round and round when I'm far away. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Sweet. Wait, let me see. Here we go. Fresh may the breezes blow, clear may the streams flow, blue above, green below, when I'm far away. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Well, may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Julie, that was awesome. Thank you, honey. Thank you for being with us today. Thank and you. Now that we have this option, we can bring you back again. Oh, please do. It's... um. I, I just have so many emotions this morning. So thank you. We love you. We bless you. Thank you. <laughs> just, you. Hear, just hear us all clapping because we are just so grateful for you. <laughs> awesome. I thank love you all. Thank, thank you. you. I'm going to share a few things that are happening. we got some exciting things coming up and I want you to know about them. Um, Tuesday evening, there's going to be a full moon sound healing meditation in our backyard at church. Um, it's going to be facilitated by Andrea Wenger. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. And um, there is information on our website. I'm not on our website. I'm sorry. On our Facebook page. Also, you can go to Andrea Wenger's um, Facebook page. Um, she has an option. She has three price points for this. So choose one and um, go online and make your donation and join us at six o'clock on Tuesday evening. It's supposed to be a beautiful evening and uh, we'll have a wonderful time. And it's a great way for people to connect. I know so many of you want to see one another. So come use this time. Also, World Day of Prayer, Unity's uh, World Day of Prayer is coming up on September 9th and 10th. It's going to be all virtual this year. It starts on uh, the 9th and um, goes into the 10th. You can go to our website or to our um, Heart Thoughts and get all the information. The important piece that I want you to know is that our prayer partners are going to be praying with you if you would like. If you want to send a prayer request to Barbara Kowalska and her information is in Heart Thought or on our website, um, she will get them to the prayer partners and the prayer partners will be making a call to you directly uh, between 6 and 8 on the 10th. So that's a wonderful um, time to have 
individual prayer. I know many of you have missed that. And um, here's a way for you to get that. One Planet Peace Forum is going to be happening and it's going to be the 25th to the 27th of which we are partnering with several other organizations. This is going to be a three-day event, um, again virtual. And the what is so exciting about this is bringing in people from all over the world to uh, this event. And um, again, you can register online. There is no cost to this. Um, however, if you want to make a donation uh, to the organization, uh, of which Abbey of Hope is the um, main um, group for this, they would surely appreciate it. But but find out more about it. I'm excited about it, and I know that you will be as well. So that is oneplanetpeaceforum.org. Again, uh, it's in your hot thought, and, and uh, so look for it. Many of you may have even gotten an invite from me. I sent out an invite to many, many people that were in my contact list, and I just am excited about this because it is a, a wonderful um, opportunity. And as we are, um, as, as nonviolence and peace is the major theme for our ministry, um, it, this is a very important organization and a very important uh, opportunity. And speaking of that, today at twelve fifteen, the Action for Peace and uh, the uh, Action for Peace and Justice uh, will be happening. Uh, our Justice and Equality actually is what it's called now at the Rotary at two o two and three o two from twelve fifteen to twelve forty five. Uh, people are coming from many different places, and so join them for that as well. Um, the silent retreat with Jack Siri has been extended um, to the uh, registration, and and payment can go through the end of September. More information will be in hot thought about that. But if you're interested in that um, retreat at Marie Joseph's, um, I invite you to take a look at that. Um, as of this moment, Rev. Leroy and I will be joining that as well. And the spiritual exploration class is still open. And we meet the third Tuesday of the month from 7 to 8.30. So if you're interested in being part of that, um, just connect with me. So lots going on, lots of wonderful things. And I'm only touching on a few of them. So make sure you check out your Heart Thought. Check out our website. Check out our Facebook page. All of that. And again, thank you for everybody that's on here today. I'm so grateful that you're here. And now is the opportunity for us to receive our offerings. And I want to say a little bit about that this morning as well. Um, the end of this month, which is tomorrow. How did another month go by? I have no idea. But actually, it ends our, um, our um, fiscal year. Remember, um, we changed our fiscal year to go from September 1st to August 30th. And so um, tomorrow is the last day of our fiscal year. And I would love for us to, to end the year in a strong financial position. And we have done very well. And so if you are so inclined and you are receiving benefits from all the things that we're doing, here's your opportunity for uh, to give back. Because we remember that giving and receiving are the same. The more that we give, the more that we receive. And so let us say together our offering statement together. Um, I think you do want Dina up there, Chris, so she can put the offering statement up. There we go. Ah, uh, that's the piece. I know. All right. We, don't even <laughs> uh, we caught you off guard. Sorry, honey. All right. Well, we don't usually have me up here with the with the uh, offering. Actually. I know. I know. But I've got it. Do it now, because I'm I'm asking for 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 um. A, a greater response. So we'll do the offering statement together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God, for the joy of giving. And thank you, God, for each and every person that has so generously um, contributed to our ministry. And so now, uh, next week, I, I'm going to be looking at uh, St. Teresa of Avila. 
Um, so you'll hear an about another one of the mid uh, Eastern, uh, mid Middle East, Middle Middle Medieval Middle, middle Ages uh, mystic. So now let us close with the peace song. All right, I think you can see the bottom here. I'll kind of barely. My name is kind of blocking it out there. <sighs> okay. <laughs> together the prayer for protection the light of god surrounds us we are the light the love of god enfolds us we are the love the power of god protects us we are the power the presence of god watches over us we are the presence wherever we are god is and all is swell and join us on Zoom for our coffee hour. That will be coming up in just a few moments. God bless you. Have a blessed week. I bow in gratitude to you.